Hi everyone, welcome to Teacher to Teacher. Today I will be talking to you about multimodal teaching. First, I will explain this concept as it is important in teaching students with exceptionalities. Then I will provide an example of multimodal teaching with our What Do You Hear game. When you are teaching multimodally, you are providing multiple means of engagement, multiple means of representation of content, and you are allowing students to express their knowledge in ways that they are able to. This is so important for learners who have difficulty processing information when it is presented in a certain way. If we want our students to take in what we are trying to communicate, we need to communicate in ways that they understand. If we are teaching in only one modality and our students have impairments in processing information in that way, then we won't be setting them up for success. That's why it's really important to use multiple modes when teaching to ensure that students will understand the information and retain it. First, an example of how to introduce the what do you hear game with a multimodal approach. Friends, it's time to play What Do You Hear? I'm going to be playing superhero sounds and super villain sounds. When you hear a superhero sound, we're gonna put our hands up in the sky or point to our superhero. If you hear a super villain sound, I want you to put your hands on your knees or point to your super villain. All right, friends, let's take a listen to what our superhero sound sounds like and our super villain sounds sounds like before we play. Here we go. Friends, it was a superhero sound. Let's put our hands up in the sky or point to our superhero. Great work. Let's listen now to our super villain sound. Here we go. And we put our hands on our knees or point to our super villain. Great work everyone. It's time to play our game to teaching during that introductory example. I provide multiple means of engagement and represent content in multiple ways by using visuals, gestures, movements, and sound supports. I also allow students to express their knowledge in ways that they are able to by either pointing to cards and visuals uh, through smaller gestures or through movements as well. They can also respond verbally. You may have noticed that I provide visuals of superheroes and supervillains to represent major and minor sounds. You may remember learning major and minor sounds by connecting them to emotions like happy and sad. I wanted to provide something more concrete for my students. How could we adapt this activity? You can use smaller gestures like sign language instead of larger movements to accommodate students with motor difficulties. What did we learn today? We learned about the importance of teaching with a multimodal approach to ensure that students are able to understand and take in everything that we are teaching. Thank you everyone for joining me today for Teacher to Teacher, where we talked about multimodal learning.